hundred years ago, there were places, clinics you could go to get treatment for eye problems. What did not exist was a place that combined patient care, teaching, research. Dr. Wilmer was convinced that by doing research, we'd be better doctors and we'd be better teachers and our students would learn more from us and our patients would get better care. It was uh, very difficult to find the funds to do this. When Mrs. Breckenridge went to him and said, I want to find the funds to create an eye institute so you can train the next generation, Dr. Wilmer told her no. He thought it was really inappropriate for patients to be asked to give donations. She did it anyway. Ida was not a woman that let men tell her what should happen. And so she raised the funds and created the institute that allowed these things to happen. She gave a gift not to Wilmer per se, but to future generations of ophthalmologists and trainees and patients. This concept of learning to improve the lives of patient care, not just by directly providing that care, but really thinking very deeply about their problems and how you can push the envelope, innovate, and improve the way that we take care of patients in the future. I would say that's central to Wilmer. We thought things would be smooth sailing when we found out we were having our third kid. Immediately upon her birth, she came out we knew something was wrong with her eyes. That was the glaucoma showing through that we didn't know. I was able to make an appointment that first day home with someone at Wilmer. We were more nervous then than we'd have ever been in our entire life walking into that appointment just wondering what they were going to tell us. And he was so reassuring. He gave us so much hope immediately saying, we see these cases, this is not the first one I've seen. We have specialists who do this work. We can help her, I'm certain. The last 10 to 15 years in the treatment of a child with pediatric glaucoma is leaps and bounds above what we might have hoped for. We're offering such amazing surgical treatments. We're advancing medical management. There's really, just within the last few years, been some really neat digital technology. And Bernie is just old enough that that's actually the next thing we're gonna be trying with her. So a child born today with glaucoma finds their way to Wilmer. No one wants that diagnosis, but we're prepared to take care of them. The audacious goal to end blindness is already happening. While I was a medical student, there were people with diabetes coming here from all over the world because Dr. Arnold Patz, who was the director at the time, had discovered with a few other individuals around the country that you could laser the retina and reduce blindness in people with diabetes by about 60%. Fortunately, through the discovery of anti-VEGF therapies, we now can eliminate 95% of the blindness from macular degeneration, and it improved upon our treatments for diabetic retinopathy that were already being done with laser, and we can eliminate blindness in most of those people. Al Summer decided, well, what about public health issues? What about diseases that you can't really eliminate one person at a time, but you might have to treat an entire village or an entire country. We were studying the role of vitamin A in trying to make the eye healthy. The vitamin A pill that he was giving them for the eye dramatically reduced their mortality rates in the developing world. Hugh Taylor went on to show that you could block river blindness with the drug ivermectin donated by Merck and river blindness was just eliminated entirely this month in Guinea, in Africa. And Sheila West continued that work on trachoma, an infectious eye disease, which thanks to work that she got done through the Gates Foundation, has now eliminated trachoma in East Africa, in Tanzania. Some Wilmer people like Frank Walsh created whole new fields. The field of neuro-ophthalmology didn't exist, but he saw that there were people with neurologic diseases that affected their vision. In the Smith Building, it dramatically expanded the interaction with others outside the Department of Ophthalmology, provided space for engineers and cell biologists and microscopists and other people to interact with the clinician scientist faculty. The Wilmer Institute not only 
has people across all specialties in cornea, in retina, in neuro-ophthalmology, pediatric ophthalmology. It works with all fields of medicine, in cardiology, in public health. It works in all fields of science, in engineering, biostatistics, artificial intelligence. Chemical engineers, biomedical engineers, material science engineers, there's chemists, cell biology, molecular biology, immunology, um, all together in one building. We're not just taking care of patients with the current know-how, we're constantly thinking about how to push the boundaries and then also training the next generation of folks that are going to then come be our collaborators next. I made a list not terribly long ago of how many trainees in glaucoma had been here and what happened to them. And looking at that sort of all-star list of People. To see that the impact you've had on an international field is probably the thing that makes me happiest about what I'm still doing. What we do here and the kinds of problems that we tackle and how we are able to innovate and really push the, the translational boundaries, you can only do that here. We're trying to culture cells from the retina that we might be able to implant back into the eye someday and hopefully get them to reconnect back to the brain. This is the future of medicine. Cell-based therapies is what I see happening in the next hundred years. We're not even gonna be doing transplants anymore. And this is a combination of a lot of evolving techniques over time that a lot of Wilmer cornea specialists have mastered and really pushed forward. I think that in, within my career, we will have identified ways in which we can actually reverse vision loss. It's a challenge to live up to the aspirations that Dr. Wilmer and Ida had, but there's not going to be any part of Wilmer that uh, isn't aspiring to excellence. People dream of being part of Hopkins. It's a special place, and so it's hard when you come here to not feel that energy, to not recognize how special it is, and not want to rise to that occasion. Patient care is at the center of everything we do, without question, and it's probably the greatest joy that we have on top of watching our students and residents and fellows become senior people who themselves enjoy patient care. Had we bounced around to ophthalmologists who might not have been on the cutting edge of research and science in this domain, I can't fathom what the prognosis would look like. Mind boggling to see it where she is now from where we thought she would be. If I think too much about it, <laughs> I won't be able to do your interview. I'll just be crying the whole time. It's a great moment, 100th anniversary, and it makes you proud to have contributed in some small way. So you pause, you think about that, you celebrate, then you go right back to seeing patients, working on your research, teaching other people, so that you can make the next 100 years just as wonderful.